Okay, welcome to this uh, course on uh, introduction to polymer science and I am Dibakar Dhara from Department of Chemistry, IIT Kharagpur. Today we will discuss about uh, the importance of polymer science and uh, I will just give brief uh, historical background on polymer science. Now, first question of course, you will ask that why you need to get introduced uh, to polymer science. Now, if you think and go back uh, uh, about the ages of uh, humankind, you will see that human civilization has marked by several ages and which are all based on the materials which are mostly used. For example, we have stone age, bronze age, iron age and now we have polymer materials age. Of course, we probably going forward we will have age of elements uh, which includes uh, silicon, uranium, lithium and so on. But uh, currently we are, we basically are in the age of polymers. Lord Alexander Todd uh, who, is, uh, who was the president of Royal Society of London and Nobel laureate in chemistry 1957 once said that I am inclined to think that the development of polymerization is uh, perhaps the biggest thing that chemistry has done where it has the biggest effect on everyday life. Now you now know that the polymers are one of the most important materials in our everyday life and as a student of science and technology you must have basic understanding or introductory understanding about polymers to even talk about no matter which industry you are working for or which discipline is your research area. The basic understanding or introductory understanding of polymers is actually very essential for getting success in, in your, your uh, regular activities. Now, why, why there is uh, this, uh, this age of polymers? The polymers are the materials of choice as of now and one of the biggest success stories in new materials development has been polymers over last century. And polymers are actually increasingly replacing and also replaced conventional materials like wood, metal, metals, stone or ceramics in several applications and especially when you think about any new material applications. At present polymers are now very often the choice of material. And as a result polymers are everywhere. If you Think about plastics, rubber, paint, surface coatings, resins, adhesives and several specialty applications you will find that polymers are everywhere. And uh, just to show some photographs of the areas in a polymers you will find if you get up in the morning and you start brushing your teeth you will use a polymeric material. and then. Uh, get ready for going to your classes or colleges, you wear dresses, clothes, shoes and these are all made of polymeric uh, polymers basically and you will take a vehicle whether a cycle or a scooter or a car, you, you will find many, many of the components in those uh, vehicles are made of uh, polymers. And you can see from these photographs. Uh, that uh, you know very commonly used materials are made up of polymers, no, not necessarily the most common materials which you use. For example, several medical applications you will find that uh, plenty of applications uh, products are made of uh, polymers, which include some of the applications where the polymers are not visible from outside. For example, a, a disposable or, or a biodegradable uh, sutures which you are used for your uh, tying as uh, teaching your during operations uh, artificial hull valve 
contact lenses, display devices and there are so many other applications where polymers are hidden inside the device which so basically you can either see the polymers uh, in applications or they can be also invisible. invisible. So, you, you know most of us are convinced that polymers are everywhere and we need to uh, study or we need to understand the behavior of polymers uh, and as a result see, we, we basically need to get ourselves introduced in polymer sciences. Why, why are polymers so poly, uh, pro popular? When you think about any material applications, you will think that the material should have high strength that means, it should be able to bear a, a large amount of load. It should be resilient which means, it should give comfort, soft feeling and preferably you can have materials which you will be able to see through or in another words that the material should be transparency and of course, anybody wants to have all these uh, properties in at a lower cost. Now, the conventional materials like metal, ceramics, glass, wood, none of these non polymeric materials can satisfy all these characteristics. For example, if you consider glass, they are having very high strength and they can bear high load, but the problem is that it actually are brittle. So, you need to be very careful during use otherwise glass actually breaks and there is a hazard involved in that. You talk about metal, metals are very difficult to get metals in a in a transparent condition and also uh, you for long use of metal in ambient, in ambient conditions gives you corrosion related problem. And of course, these materials are much heavy material you know you want something uh, uh, a material which should be a light. So, that you can carry you know carrying uh, is always easier and transport cost comes down. So, polymers give or satisfy all these properties plus it gives additional advantages which I have listed in the next page. So, basically other beneficial properties of the polymers are that they are durable you know polymers are made of mainly carbon carbon containing carbon carbon hydrogen organic materials. So, carbon hydrogen and oxygen. So, they are mostly the regular plastics or polymers which we use they are of hydrophobic in nature as a result they are they are resistant to hydrolysis and they are stable and also they are stable against electrochemical corrosion. They are very light. So, they if you consider the strength versus weight the polymers gives you the maximum strength versus weight ratio for a given weight of material you can achieve high strength in polymers. Polymers gives you design flexibility because the melting temperature or processing temperature of polymers are much lower. So, you can actually make products out of polymers at a low cost and spending much lower energy and because you can melt polymer and so you can actually uh, design lot of polymeric uh, products uh, as per your choice you know so basically it gives you design flexibility. Polymers are generally thermal and electrical insulators so that gives you lot of advantages uh, in use. And because there are plenty of options uh, in polymers, so there are, you can actually have many choices uh, in in polymer material. Additionally, it gives you feedstock flexibility. In it, can, if most polymers are nowadays are used uh, or made from petroleum fractions, but it can be also made from natural gases and coal. And some polymers uh, are can also be 
made from agricultural and uh, forest products uh, and biomass uh, as a alternative resources. But mostly polymers are, uh, are made for synthesized from petroleum products. So, that means uh, polymers are actually part of uh, petrochemical industry. So, basically when you talk about uh, polymer industries, uh, we talk about petrochemical industries like uh, in West Bengal we have Haldia Petrochemicals uh, which produces uh, polymers you have Reliance Petrochemicals which also produces polymers and there are other petrochemical companies which actually produces uh, polymers. So, what is, what is the, the origin of uh, good properties of um, polymers? Uh, for that we just briefly uh, know what are polymers. We have not uh, discussed, I have not discussed uh, what are polymers, but just briefly if we look what are polymers. You know, polymers are large molecules or in short we call macromolecules which consist of many repeating structural units. So, pictorically we can show that just to give example that you have um, small repeat units which are uh, shown here and they actually get linked with each other to produce a polymeric uh, large molecular weight. And polymers are mostly made for of uh, made of uh, organic compounds that gives you the light weight and other beneficial properties. And if you compare a uh, small molecule and a polymer molecule, the the reason for polymer you know, good properties of polymer comes from that the fact that if you compare a small molecules like a ball of rice say we have now rice is made of some small molecules. So, basically you can put a spoon and easily take out a spoon of rice boiled rice or and eat it. Now, that is possible because the molecules or the rice are very small. So, they do not they do not entangle each other as a result you can easily separate them and those individual molecules in this case rice they behave independently they do not uh, you know uh, a, a basically they do not interfere the movement of other molecules. Now, when you compare a polymeric molecules because they are large because they are large you basically find that they are entanglement like if you have a bowl of noodles then if you put your spoon and if you want to take it out you cannot take a single chain of noodles from the sample or from the bowl because because the large length they are entangled with each other. So, basically they are completely entangled and as a result the molecules cannot move independently. Now, this gives basically the, the advantageous properties or strength of the polymers, the toughness of the polymers because, because the polymers change as they are entangled. So, if you apply some forces, they can basically easily dissipate those forces and give you high strength and toughness and so on. We will come back on these uh, topics more uh, going forward. So, basically the high molecular weight helps in providing superior properties like high tensile strength, impact resistance, toughness, melt viscosity and so on. So, we will now look at the brief history of uh, science of polymers and as we already know that uh, you know, polymers are nothing but macromolecules. And they are basically used the term two terms polymers and macromolecules are often used uh, you know synonymously. So, when you talk about brief um, history of science of polymers, so we can also talk about the science of um, macromolecules. So, polymer science is unlike the normal um, you know other topics or other areas of physics and chemistry where first there is a a strong theoretical basis and uh, 
on base based on which basically the subsequent research and industrialization happens happened polymer science is is the other way around initially polymer science was born in great industrial laboratories of the world you know before basic understanding about polymers polymer related industries were up and running and polymers existed uh, in natural form for long time till the life began uh, for example in our uh, body we have dna macromolecules like dna rna proteins uh, polysaccharides which plays crucial roles in uh, plants and animal life and you know from ancient times these naturally occurring polymers were exploited by man uh, for making several items like uh, they were used for clothing uh, decoration shelters tools and also for printing materials and etc so the origin of today's polymer in industry happened in 19th century when important discoveries uh, were made uh, related to modification of some of these uh, natural polymers so basically the the first uh, uh, research on polymers happened in 19th century when uh, um, people or scientists actually tried to modify take these uh, natural polymers and modify them for uh, for making uh, or, in, or for improving their properties some of the examples uh, of those research is uh, shown here and uh, for example if you talk about uh, uh, goodyear goodyear uh, who actually found um, that uh, heating natural rubber rubber with uh, uh, sulfur actually increase uh, the elasticity of the natural rubber and also tackiness which is very beneficial for the use of natural rubber later you know um, hanok and the goodyear himself they found that if you use large amount of sulfur and heat with natural rubber you can actually make very hard rubber which are called vulcanite and later hanok was actually uh, granted a patent in england and then um, goodyear's charles goodyear's brother nelson goodyear was actually was granted a patent in us at 1851 for this component uh, compound vulcanite there also cellulose nitrate cellulose nitrate also was uh, uh, basically or nitrocellulose sometimes they call was basically used for several applications like celluloid and celluloid photographic films and so on so before 1907 actually there are lot of research happen uh, for modification of this natural polymers but at 19 40 uh, 1907 is when the first when the first uh, first fully synthetic polymers were invented by leo h beckland by reaction of uh, phenol with formaldehyde formaldehyde and the product was called bakelite and it went to commercial production in 1910 1910 so bakelite was the first fully synthetic polymers invented by leo h beckland beckland from the reaction of phenol and formaldehyde so he was granted a us patent uh, in 1909 following which at 19 and 110 this uh, product was commercialized he basically was trying to invent a 
material polymeric material which was substituted for shellac which was then wholly supplied from India to the world. And in the process he made first man made polymeric material which basically started the age of plastics or polymers which we talked about in the beginning. The material was heat resistant and insulating and he actually founded a company called Bakelite Corporation in 1910 to manufacture this product. Now, till now during this uh, inventions uh, and also modification of uh, this natural polymers, there was not not uh, practically there was no understanding about uh, the nature of the polymers. In a most cases uh, it was thought that these uh, polymer molecules are are associated colloids or, or basically they are associated aggregates of small molecules like micelles which are formed from soap molecules. So, there was no idea existed that polymers were actually made up of large macromolecules which are uh, joint which are basically having a repeating units are uh, having a joint by covalent bonding. So, from there this concept of macromolecules uh, came and so as I said the polymer industry was running well without proper understanding of the nature of polymers and for over a century the scientists believed that uh, the polymers consisted of physically associated aggregates of small molecules like micelles or surfactants. Only in 1920, Harman Stodinger was a professor of organic chemistry at ETH Zurich, first conceived that the polymers are made of very large molecules containing large sequence of simple chemical units linked together by covalent bond. Covalent bond is the word you must notice. So, this is the first time somebody actually conceived that polymers are actually large molecule which were made up by linking of repeating units by covalent bonds. That is the reason this Harman Stodinger is considered as father of macromolecular chemistry. So, he propounded uh, the revolutionary concept that macromolecules can be formed by linking of a large number of small molecules by means of covalent bonds. And it was he, he could not basically experimentally prove or basically there was no at that time there was no experimental evidence to prove that, that indeed this is the case. So, basically from his intuition and imagination he proposed and he published a paper title over polymerization in the journal it is uh, mentioned here in 1920. So, that is the year which has considered the basically the start or beginning of macromolecules as a science and so this year 2020 is the 100th year of macromolecular chemistry and that is the reason this year has been celebrated by many uh, chemical societies and chemists across globe as 100th year of macromolecular chemistry. However, it was not easy for him to convince the scientific community. The contemporaries were very reluctant to admit the existence of uh, extremely large compounds so with molecular exceeding 5000. As I mentioned earlier, they actually believe that these polymers are nothing but micelle type aggregates so like uh, as observed for soap molecules and which basically accounts for these you know unusual properties of these uh, polymeric materials like high viscosity and so on. Moreover, some scientists were convinced 
that the size of a macromolecule or, or molecule could not could never exceed the size of the unit cell as measured by x-ray crystallography. But Storinger did not give up, he actually tried and convinced uh, the rest of the scientific community and so as, a, as uh, to do that he actually performed additional experiments and so basically he uses uh, uh, the con traditional classical organic chemistry experiments to support the existence of high molecular polymers. His experiments on hydrogenation of natural rubber did not show any dissimilar properties than normal hydrogenated uh, normal unsaturated rubber and during late 1920s uh, Storinger provided additional evi evidences based on viscometry to confirm that the molecular weights remained unchanged during chemical modification of uh, polymers. Despite these impressive experiments Storinger continued to encounter very strong opposition from eminent scientists of that period and some of the not among them some of the notable were Emil Fisher and Weyland and both were Nobel Prize winners. So, you can imagine that somebody a young scientist who is proposing something from an imagination and intuition which has been opposed by the Nobel laureates then he must be some genius to basically to fight for his uh, you know convincing others to prove his uh, uh, his conception that the polymers are indeed made up of large macromolecules. By the end of 1920s and during 1930s Storinger's macromolecular concept found increasing acceptance by other chemists uh, and that was especially due to the work. Uh, by uh, Harman Mark and Wallace H. Caruthers and finally, in 1953 Storinger was awarded Nobel Prize for his uh, discovery or his uh, work on macromolecular chemistry. We need to talk about uh, other pillars of macromolecular chemistry. Uh, for we, we need to, uh, the Harman F. Mark was actually a crystallographer who basically helped Strodinger to convince that that the molecules can have molecular weight uh, more than 5000 or it can be larger than unit cell. So, basically he, he was one of the pillars which who helped or who basically helped Strodinger to uh, convince the the scientific community that polymers are indeed large uh, molecules. William H. Caruthers, who basically confirmed the existence of molecules of extremely high molecular weight, and he laid and developed uh, the first totally synthetic fiber using consumer. Uh, product which are basically used for con consumer products. He basically first uh, invented uh, linear polymers from condensation polymers and using for making polyamides. And later Paul J. Flory who actually developed fundamental understanding both theoretical and experimental in the physical chemistry of uh, macromolecules. So, basically Stodinger along with these three other scientists Harman F. Mark, Wallace H. Caruthers and Paul J. Flory should be considered as the pillars of macromolecular chemistry. Now, following this understanding there was uh, plenty of uh, um, basically activities among scientists for developing new polymers and there were large scale uh, polymer production happened during uh, this uh, 1950s to uh, 70s, 70s and which continued 
till 1990s. So basically, um, and this 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 uh, this uh, time frame was uh, basically the 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 polymers were discovered, which was facilitated by the cheap or availability of uh, petrochemicals. So, in now when we move forward to the new millennium and beyond 2020, basically polymer sciences are now looking for newer applications or more specialized applications for polymers. So, So, basically in 2020 onwards, we have this second century on of polymer sciences. So, basically we will st I will stop it now. So, in the, in the next lecture what I will do, I will uh, talk about uh, more about the polymer as a whole to give you the picture of um, in a bird eye picture of polymer sci uh, polymer as a product and then talk about what is the problem of polymers and how what are the present research need for in, in polymer science.